One woman is dead tonight after a random stabbing, all while she was walking her dog. Good evening and thank you for watching KHQ Local News at 5 o'clock. I'm Stephanie Vigil. I'm Dan Kleckner. It happened in the area of South Riverton and Magnolia just after 8 o'clock this morning. She was taken to the hospital but did not survive the attack. We have team coverage tonight. Alex Rizzio right, will have more information on how police investigate these types of random crimes. But first, we are joined by KHQ Local News reporter Kelsey Watts. She's been in that area most of the day. She joins us live now with the very latest. Kelsey? Dan, Stephanie, good evening to you. This is a terrifying attack here. Happened in broad daylight on this narrow dirt section of Tuffy's Trail. You can see here this area covered with bushes and trees. And we've just learned the victim's name, Charlotte McGill, a 55-year-old woman who lived in an apartment complex nearby and often walked her dog here in this area. Now, this morning began no different, but Charlotte never made it home. The woman lived in the apartment below Corey Shippey. He didn't see her attack, but awoke in a panic to her screams for help and looked outside. I looked down there and she looked up at me and she's like, can you go get my daughter? I've been stabbed. So my wife called 911. Corey and a construction worker who had also heard her cries rushed down to help, but there was little they could do. The woman had been stabbed three or four times in the upper body. She was having problems breathing. And there's really nothing I could do. She was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery and told police a man had jumped out from the bushes, stabbed her at random, then ran. I hope my people will, you know, not go walking by themselves, although I don't know if that would have made a difference today. This is a very serious uh, issue to have somebody accosted by a stranger and stabbed like this. So we've really thrown everything we have at it right now. Police rushed in with a canine, detectives and forensics team scouring the trail for evidence and talking with witnesses. Pretty uh, shocking, to say the least. Neighbors waited for word and finally it came. The woman who'd been facing life-threatening injuries died at the hospital. Hearing the news, Corey Sh one of many who broke down and told us he only wished there was more he could have done. Kelsey Watts has been following this story since the beginning. She joins us live now with more details on just who Charlotte McGill was. Kelsey? Stephanie, Dan, good evening to you. She was a deeply loved woman with a zest for life. And as you can see here, a cross was just put up a little more than an hour ago in her memory. Her uh, sudden loss of life has just stunned everybody here. As I said, she was deeply loved and has a long history with Costco. She really enjoyed spending time with her daughter and as she loved gardening. Uh, she was a really creative person and she is, um, is one that will surely be missed. Charlotte McGill had a long history as a Costco employee. She'd been with the company for 12 years, first in Medford, Oregon, then Wenatchee, and just last year transferred to the Spokane Valley store to be closer to her daughter. The news of her death, a shock for everyone. The manager of the Wenatchee store told me she loved interacting with customers and always had a smile. The infectious laugh that she had was something that was uh, only recognizable by uh, you know, her closest friends, and uh, she was she was an amazing person. Her only daughter, Billy, was her world. This picture posted online shows a much younger Charlotte with her then little girl. Billy, now in her 20s, was home yesterday morning when her mother was attacked. She went to the hospital with her, but came home alone. On Facebook yesterday, Billy posted, thank you for your support and remember her with a smile, a memory her co-workers won't forget. Worked behind our membership desk and, and really kind of had a following of people that would come in and talk to her. And, uh, you know, just she always had a positive outlook and very upbeat. And, uh, you know, it's just it's, it's, it's a sad day for us. Right now on KHQ. Breaking news. All right, let's get an update on this uh, assault along the Centennial Trail. That's right. For the very latest, we turn now to Patrick Erickson. What's going on? Actually, I think it's Kelsey Watts. Oh, Kelsey Watts. I apologize. Kelsey, what's going on? Hi, Dan and Stephanie. We just got here a few seconds ago. We're just a couple blocks away from where Charlotte McGill lived. We're here at Sharp and Medellia, and here's what we know right now. A woman was running on the Centennial Trail when she was attacked by a man who hit her in the head with some kind of mallet. Now, a maintenance man witnessed this attack. She yelled at him, that's the guy. The maintenance man then chased the suspect into the river. The suspect swam right across where police caught him, and he's now sitting here in handcuffs. We were told he is a seven 
17 year old man, so his name will not be released, but he is being arrested for second degree assault. Now we just saw the victim uh, just made it over to this side of the river in the back of a police car. She is going to be taken to the hospital to be checked out, has a bandage wrapped around her head right now, but is awake and talking, appears to not have any serious injuries, just obviously very shaken up here. Now again, this is just down the street from where Charlotte McGill was murdered on Centennial Trail and just a couple weeks ago. We also told you about a Gonzaga student who was attacked near this area as well. So this has the neighborhood pretty shaken up tonight. You can still see some police cars here on scene. The uh, victim and suspect have both just left the scene as you're seeing right now. Again, this is at Sharp and Medallia. That suspect on his way to jail being booked for second degree assault. Dan and Steph. A random attack, a murderer at large. Right now on KHQ Local News, the search for a killer. This is KHQ Local News at 5. Exclusive video you will only see on KHQ. You are looking at the arrest of 17-year-old Avondre Graham. He was taken into custody last night after police say he violently assaulted a woman jogging on the Centennial Trail. Today, detectives told us this man, the man you'll see in this video, may be connected to the murder of Charlotte McGill back in May. If that turns out to be true, it is a break in this case four months in the making. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Vigil. Dan has the night off. We have extensive coverage to get to. First, we want to quickly bring up uh, you up to date on Avondre's arrest. Now take a look at this map. You can see where last night's attack took place near Mission and Upriver Drive. And then across the river where Charlotte McGill was killed, Avondre Graham was actually arrested on the south side of the river. After the attack, he tried swimming away, and when he came ashore, police were there waiting to arrest him. KHQ was the only station on scene during that arrest, and we were able to shoot this exclusive video of Andre Graham before he was taken to jail. Well, tonight we have big team coverage. Dylan Woolenhouse has been tracking the search for evidence today. Kelsey Watts will join us with details on Andre Graham's home life. He lived in the same complex as Charlotte McGill. Katie Steiner has background on other attacks in this general area. The suspect in several of the attacks matches of Andre's description. But let's start tonight with Alex Rozier. And Alex, since this arrest, you've been learning an awful lot about Andre Graham. What do we know about him right now? Stephanie, good evening tonight. First and foremost, Andre Graham is 17 years old, but following his attack and assault and robbery as well on an innocent woman on the Centennial Trail yesterday, he will be tried as an adult for right now. He's going to be only charged with first degree robbery and second degree assault. But when police said Avondre Graham may be connected to the murder of an innocent woman who was walking her dog, I looked at court documents and found that this isn't Graham's only arrest. In fact, this assault isn't his only arrest this year. In February, police took him into custody on a domestic violence felony harassment charge. I checked the court documents today. In those documents, one of the officers testified that as he was pulling Graham out of the house, Graham yelled, quote, when I get out, I'm coming back to kill all of you. End quote. His mom reported in February that her son was getting more depressed and angry. She said Andre gave her two options. He said, take him to California or he was going to kill himself. California is also interesting in this case, and here's why. Graham's uncle lived in California, and on Facebook, his mother said that her brother served as a father figure to her boys. That supposed father figure to Graham died on May 3rd. Charlotte McGill was murdered on May 3rd. The day after the McGill murder and the death of her brother, Avondre Graham's mother asked her late brother to look over her kids and she wrote in part, quote, send me the strength to be a good mom by myself and keep the kids in the right direction. Keep the kids in the right direction. Her son is now in custody tonight following an assault and robbery of an innocent woman on the Centennial Trail. And as we've learned today from Spokane police, he may just be connected to the murder of Charlotte McGill. We're going to follow this story until the very end. Reporting live tonight outside Juvenile Correction Center, I'm Alex Rozier, KHQ Local News. Alex, thank you. Team coverage continues now. We now know of Andre Graham lived in the same apartment complex as Charlotte McGill, who was murdered just a few feet from her home on Tuffy's Trail back in May. KHQ local news reporter Kelsey Watts joins us live tonight from the River Park Apartments on East South Riverton and Magnolia. Kelsey? 
Stephanie, ever since Charlotte McGill was murdered back in May, police and her neighbors have been looking for her killer, and now we learn he may have lived just a few doors down. Charlotte McGill lived on the first floor of this building just around the corner here, and her possible killer, Andre Graham, lived on the first floor of this building ne just next door with his family. When I found that out this morning, you know, that really relieved me, but yet scared me because here he is right here. Could have happened in, in could have happened to me in my apartment. Residents of the apartment complex say they're relieved to finally possibly have closure. I was there yesterday as we got this exclusive video of his arrest on assault charges. Again, police are careful to say Graham has not been charged with murder. Major crimes detectives only say that he matches the suspect's description and they believe there may be a link. Neighbors tell me of Andre Graham's apartment here was raided last night and you can see some damage to the door but police cannot confirm that raid. Neighbors say he's a quiet 17 year old. He doesn't say much and they believe he may have mental health issues. So we keep the kids in the house you know at night and stuff just because of what did happen. And don't want anything to happen to my kids so yeah I was pretty concerned when I found out that he lived just a couple doors down. Neighbors have been on edge since May when Charlotte McGill was randomly and brutally attacked while out walking her dog. She had just moved in with her daughter a week before she was stabbed three or four times and died shortly thereafter. A murder with no breaks in the case for four months. Very frustrated and scary. It's very scary even when you're afraid to even come out of your house. And when Charlotte McGill was attacked, there was an outpouring of love and support for her and her daughter who lived here with her and was with her mother in the moments right after that attack. We'll have more on that part of the story coming up tonight at 6. Reporting live in Spokane, I'm Kelsey Watts, KHQ Local News. <laughs> Dan, thank you. We're going to start right now with Kelsey Watson. Kelsey, Avondre Graham has been in police custody for a week now. What led to police to charge him with murder today? Stephanie, good evening. Police tell me the breakthrough in the case is last Thursday's assault in which Avondre Graham was arrested. They just needed a few days to speak with him and other witnesses before filing that murder charge today. But that's not the only new charge he's facing. Police say he's also behind the attack of the Gonzaga student that happened back on August 29th along that same section of trail. A brutal murder followed by two more senseless attacks, all against women, all in broad daylight and all in the same area. It's been a disturbing mystery for months that police say ended when 17 year old of Andre Graham was caught last week. This video of his arrest you'll only see on KHQ. Clearly the other assaults show that Avondi Graham had no intention of stopping. Were he not into custody, it's very likely we would have more victims and possibly even more homicide victims as well. Spokane police say Graham was clearly preying on women in the area, but as for a motive, so far they don't have one. At this time, it seems like there were random attacks. It turned out Graham was interviewed in the days following McGill's murder in May, and police say he never fell off their radar. But what they needed was probable cause. For months, the investigation continued, but when two more women were attacked in the same manner and area, that was the turning point. Graham did provide an interview for detectives uh, concerning his involvement in the uh, McGill homicide. Police can't say what Graham told them or if DNA or other evidence collected at the scene matches up, but they will say detectives are very confident they have their guy. The man police believe stabbed to death a stranger for no apparent reason at all. To have someone do that in this community, in this environment, it's just scary to have someone like that on the street. If they'll do things like that to a woman, there's no telling what they'll do. Those new charges just went to the prosecutor's office late this morning, and we expect to see Evandre Graham make his first appearance on that murder charge either tomorrow or Monday. Now, police say because of his age, he will remain in the juvenile jail, but he will be tried as an adult. Reporting live tonight at the Public Safety Building, I'm Kelsey Watts, KHQ Local News.
Two people who had never met before, now forever linked, brought together by an unimaginable situation, a brutal attack on the Centennial Trail. The victim calling out for help and those calls answered by a nearby maintenance worker. Tonight, for the first time, Debbie Watkins gets the chance to formally meet and thank Joshua Gale. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Vigil. Dan is off tonight. Police say that Watkins' attacker last Thursday was 17-year-old of Andre Graham, and they believe Graham is the same man who murdered 55-year-old Charlotte McGill last May. Police say that without Gail's intervention, Debbie Watkins could easily have been more than an assault victim. She could have been a murder victim. KHQ's Dylan Wollenhouse had the chance to introduce Watkins to Joshua Gale, and Dylan, this must have been an emotional, emotional ceremony. Stephanie, good evening. It absolutely was. We are live here on the trail where Debbie Watkins was attacked. When we talked to her earlier today, she said she is a firm believer of divine intervention, and that very well may have been the case the night she was attacked as Josh Gale was in his maintenance shop just a few feet away, heard her screams, came down to the trail, tended to Debbie on the trail, and then he ran down the suspect of Andre Graham. And today, for the very first time, both Debbie Watkins and Joshua Gale met since that attack just to say thanks. Hey. Hi, how are you? You're like my guardian angel, oh. I think. <laughs> you doing well. I, um, I look a little better than the last Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot happier, funny. yeah. Only smiles today between Josh Gale and Debbie you Watkins. I'm grateful you stuck it out and made sure you were screaming. <laughs> That's amazing. I thought he sounded like a little girl, didn't he? <laughs> I was a little confused. I was like, what is that noise? Like, Those screams brought Josh Gale running from his maintenance shop at the Maplewood Garden Apartments to help Debbie Watkins. Josh first told us his story a week ago. He ran up the hill and down the other side of the tracks. Gale had instinctly ran after the suspect of Andre Graham and chased him into the river, where finally police caught up to Graham on the other side. I'm just grateful that you were there. Gale, having no idea that who he was chasing may have been behind other Centennial Trail attacks. He ran up onto the tracks like yeah, right here. Much less, possibly the man the who murdered little... Charlotte McGill four months ago on Tuffy's Trail. Yeah, there were so many little, like, circumstances that led up to me being here. Circumstances like the paperwork that had to be finished bringing him back to his office for only a few minutes. I wasn't supposed to be here. The screams of Debbie Watkins that were heard inside of his shop. There's something, something definitely divine there. Yeah, and I had all of that not added up. <laughs> I look like I was an MMA fighter. A smile <laughs> and a laugh may not have been shared today between two people that were meant to meet. Josh and I were supposed to be in that place at that time for that moment, then I'm good with that. Such a great story between those two. You can see both of them are very, very humble. Josh maintains he was just doing what anyone would do in his situation, and Debbie Watkins maintains that she is not a victim in all of this, that the real victims are Charlotte McGill and her family. Reporting live, Dylan Wollenhouse, KHQ, Local News.